Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sunscreen Saturday. You can hear the chiming. I am looking at Say today. This is the Sun Visor and it's tinted and it's moisturizing and there are oils in here. Now I'm going to do two days on this because I'm not going to put on foundation today and I will tell you about the ingredients after this application. Yesterday I did microneedling, which I haven't done in months. And to me, that's what something like this is good for. It's mineral and it's oil-based. We're doing a quarter teaspoon, which is how much you need to get your face and neck. More specifically, there was a derm who told us what the formula was. It's like two mil per square centimeter, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. <laughs> but it came down to a quarter of a teaspoon for a man's face. So since women are a little bit smaller, I figure a heaping quarter teaspoon for face and neck is good enough for women, and frankly, more than most people wear. So I have filled it up, and we're going to put this on the face. But I'm not going to put on makeup today, which, you know, first day after microneedling, no reason to, to do that. And that's how much it is. After needling, your face is a little sore and definitely swollen. And that inflammation is something that you want because it's the inflammation that causes the healing cascade. So I'm not fighting it. I'm not taking aspirin. I'm not doing my red light. I'm not doing anything that might help that. Even though this feels thick, as you rub it in, it becomes more liquidy in its nature. I would even say watery, except that it is not watery. You can feel the oils in it. There's grapeseed oil in here and Jehovah esters. I'm not going to get into the ingredients too much, but I believe there's also things that are coconut derived. So if you are somebody who has problems with coconut, you're not going to enjoy it. But just wait until I get to the part where I break down the ingredients. Still have a lot on. The SPF isn't as strong as I would like, especially after microneedling. So this is something I would wear if I'm going to put gas in the car, or I'm going to the grocery store, or maybe I'm going to water some of my plants, but not do some, you know, heavy duty stuff outside. If I take Lucy for a walk wearing something like this, it would be wearing a hat, and I would go for a walk immediately because, as you know, sunscreen degrades as it's exposed to the sun. So, this is what it looks like. It has a cool undertone to it as opposed to the things that tend to turn orange, but this might turn. So, I am going to turn off the camera and do some dusting or wash some dishes and I'll be back in 10 minutes and we'll see if this has gotten warmer because right now it feels the teeniest bit cool. I don't have a problem with it. It's not uh, gray by any means, but I do see that undertone. I don't see it on my computer here, but I see it in the mirror here. Ever, ever, ever so slightly there's a tone. So let's see what it develops into. All right, you guys, I'm back. I washed the dishes for a little while and I don't think that it's changed colors, but you'll be able to tell maybe better than me, depending on how the camera decides to depict colors. Thank you, camera. We're having a very difficult relationship right now. And in the mirror, this is extraordinarily shiny. This is just shiny. I know the sun's coming out. Shiny, 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 shiny. Like, it's more shiny than my regular stuff, I feel. It looks wet. And I feel the weight of it on my face. It feels a little bit uncomfortable. It, it's weird. When you touch it, it doesn't really feel heavy necessarily. But it's like, I, I can't describe it. I feel the weight of it. They say that this absorbs into the skin. And I'm saying, no, it doesn't. Not if you use the correct amount to get the SPF, which is only 35. If you use a quarter teaspoon, it doesn't sink into the skin. It kind of lays on top of it. And I absolutely 
100% feel the weight of it. And I feel it on my fingers after doing that, like icky. So, as I said, I microneedled last night. I didn't go very deep. My deepest was one mil. This is the kind of thing you want to do, something that has an oil in it. You feel like you're getting some protection, but it doesn't have a lot of protection in it. So the next time I come back, we're going to put this on in a day or two when I'm ready to start with foundation again and see how this works under foundation. My guess is it's not going to be that great because it just moves. It doesn't sink into the skin, you know. It, it, it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see tomorrow. And that's when we'll go through all the ingredients and apply it under foundation, bronzer, blush. And I'll be back in a minute. All right, you guys, today is day two. It's quite a bit later, actually. And before we get into it, I want to talk about this a little bit. Now, they have another product that is a skin tint, and they have far more colors than this. And I went for this because they're saying it's a sunscreen. The SPF seems to be the same, and they haven't really gone out of their way to explain the difference. Like, why do they have both products? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just going to read a little bit to you. But I am going to have to put on the glasses. This is what they're saying. 100% mineral broad spectrum SPF 35 moisturizer shears out and absorbs easily thanks to non-nano zinc oxide. Skin is left looking hydrated, healthy, and dewy. The pocket-friendly tube makes it easy to bring along wherever you are going. Sun visor may not be right for people with very oily skin. <laughs> the highlights are licorice, which is brightening, a hyaluronic acid, which is a humectant, and aloe vera, which is soothing. And when I look at the ingredients, the third ingredient is grapeseed oil. And then they have, looks like Argania Spinosa kernel oil, tocopherol acetate, that's vitamin E, sodium hyaluronate, Jehovah esters, beeswax, which can be a problem for some people. I can't believe I'm actually able to read this, you guys. I must be having a good ID. Radish root ferment filtrate, that's actually good. Glycerin, that's great, a humectant. A humectant. Mica. Uh, you know, xanthan gum, viola tricolor extract. So there's some nice sounding things in here. The licorice root extract is towards the bottom, as is the sodium hyaluronate and the aloe. Wow, they're really at the bottom. And I, I kind of, it, it bugs me when people are using this as, this is a call out, this is what we have, and it's right at the bottom. Is it effective at that rate? I'm going to say, Probably not. But we're going to put it on, and now we're going to put on foundation on top of it. So let's get going. Quarter teaspoon. This is like pump eight, but you know, there's some gaps because it's thick. So I'm going to say nine pumps. It's probably pretty good. And that's what it looks like. So that's about a quarter teaspoon. A heaping quarter teaspoon is kind of my goal. I've already done my skincare. And today's a good day for this for me because I shaved last night and a lot of skin came off. I don't shave very often, mm, you know what I mean? <laughs> I might do it maybe once a month and I don't have a schedule for it. It's not like with microneedling you have to do 30 days so you have to kind of be aware of what you're doing. But after I shave my skin is a little sensitive so it's a good day to do a mineral and to take it easy on the actives. I do believe, you guys, that this will transfer to your clothes because it never really sets up. And if that's an important thing for you, good to keep in mind. And it is, you know, it doesn't blend in beautifully. <laughs> so you have to keep on going. And I put on my skincare like 15 minutes ago, so that is well sunken in. So I'm just going to keep on working it, especially the nose is quite streaky. And also it gets in your baby hairs, you know what I mean? So maybe a headband that really is 
locking in your baby hairs would be a good idea. Now I have used this before under my foundation and I have to say I prefer this under my foundation to the Biosance because the Biosance I always felt its presence when I touched it on my face. There was just a, a tackiness where when I wore this before I didn't have that feeling but right now I mean its presence is very very noticeable. So I'm going to let this set up for a solid 10 and come back and we'll put on the reboot and see what happens. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, you guys, and I am feeling the teeniest bit of tingle. So, like I said, I did shave last night. It's less than, you know, it's probably 12 hours since I shaved my face. And I am feeling something. Uh, let's get into the reboot. I always use the reboot when I'm doing a sunscreen. And usually, I apply with my fingers. So that is what I'm going to do again. As you can see, there's not a white cast here. The face is quite shiny, but I do feel its presence. Absolutely. One thing about the oil-based sunscreens that I don't love, they lay on top of your skin and they're very, very movable. Where most of my sunscreens feel like they absorb into the skin. The oils don't feel like that to me. The oils feel a little bit dangerous to me. But if you have very, very, very dry skin, maybe it won't matter to you. This is not a fantastic blend. I mean, it's not horrible. I've had worse, but you can see I'm just, I'm so, 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 <laughs> so very shiny. So before I go in with any other makeup, I have to let this set up for a little bit because there is no way any kind of cream and no wake powder, but a cream I think would just kind of smear all over the place if I go on. So that's two waiting periods with this. I mean, we can give it a try. Yeah, let's just give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, this does not feel like it's something I want to do. I definitely, it's, yeah, it's going to be a mess. So, and I also feel like I'm not so sure at this state right now. I'm just even it up, you guys. I wouldn't want to powder it because it's, it would be just like putting powder on something wet. You know what I mean? It would get clumpy and bumpy and really, really awful. So I'm going to have to give this another 10 minutes. Okay, it's about not quite 10 minutes later, you guys. Uh, look, I think it looks pretty, but I think it looks pretty because I think the reboot looks pretty. But I feel the presence of it on the skin. The itching, tingling kind of thing is persisting. Again, that's related to my shaving. But that is the reason I would go in with the minerals after I've done something. We're going to powder now because not only is the shine a little too much, but I'm afraid this is going to move around and I don't want it to. Let's do some powder. Now my brush looks like it normally does. Boom, boom, boom. I believe that I'm going to be picking up some of this product and it's not going to look very good in a minute. And, yeah, it's not really it's not really grabbing. Here's what the brush looks like now. Look at that. Okay, look you guys, I have worn this before. It was a couple of weeks ago and I really don't remember what I did. But my overall impression was this. I felt that eventually it dried down in comparison to the Biosense, where I felt when I touched my skin, I could feel the stickiness of the Biosense at seven o'clock at night. So eventually this dries down, but it is nowhere near dry down now, and it's easily 20 minutes after I initially put it on, and it feels soaking wet. My brush, that doesn't look so hot. <laughs> that don't look hot at all. I do remember feeling seven hours later, you know, seven o'clock at night, whatever it was, this didn't have that same 
thick presence on my skin that the Biosans had, but I don't remember how I got there. I don't remember what the day was like, what the weather was like, and how I powdered it. But you can see I, I put a pretty generous amount of powder on and there's still a lot of shine all over the face. If that floats your boat, then this will work for you. If it doesn't float your boat, you're going to have a problem with this. For me, this would be an after procedure, shaving, microneedling, acid, whatever, kind of a thing, but it is not for daily use. And I wouldn't use this for hiking or gardening because it will just melt. So you start to get a little sweaty and you move it, swipe it aside with your hand, you're, everything leaves. You're no longer protected. So not for outside use. And you guys, that's it for me and this sunscreen. It's, that's not good for your bristles, for sure. And that's it. Thanks so much for joining me today, Sunscreen Saturday. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart, and I'm wishing you good health.